Hey guys, what's going on? Josh here from Polymathics, the YouTube channel that helps you become a modern day renaissance man. And today we are continuing our series in the initiation phase of the monomyth. Now, if you haven't heard, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, go and check out my other videos on the subject. I have a whole bunch now that will kind of guide you through. But those of you who have been following, we, we spoke about the purpose of the initiation phase. We talked about the general purpose of the road of trials, which is, in, in my opinion, the road of trials covers the entire initiation phase. But now what we're going to start talking about are the individual characters and situations that your hero and their team will come across during the road of trials. And the first person that we're going to talk about is the goddess. The first, this is also the first person that Joseph Campbell mentions in his book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces. However, don't get caught up on the, the steps. They don't always have to go in order. It really depends on the needs of the story. Let me say that again. It depends on the needs of the story. It depends on the needs of your story. So don't get caught up if you've already written something and you realize that your goddess figure is not step two in the initiation phase. It doesn't have to be. It's just, it's just like any template. The monomyth is a template to give an idea of how the story should roll but it's not the end all definitive version. That's where you as the author get to go in there and sculpt it and paint it in the way that you see fit to show it in the best way that is appropriate for you. So keep that in mind because as Chris Vogler points out, a lot of writers get so hung up on things having to be in a specific place and they miss the bigger purpose, which is to tell a story that's going to engage an audience and that's going to enrich their lives when they leave. So with all of that being said, now that I'm off my soapbox, what is the purpose of this goddess figure? First of all, it doesn't have to be a goddess. And this is so funny. Because we just got, we just finished talking about don't worry about the order. Also, don't worry about the sex of the individual. The reason why Joseph Campbell called this person the goddess figure is because in many of the ancient myths, the, the, the person who represented this character was normally a female goddess. It does not have to be. Now I'm going to give you a really good example in a minute of someone who is not a goddess but fulfills all of those roles. And once you understand who that is and see that, you'll completely follow. So when you, when you look at the goddess role, it's really the goddess plays the uber mentor in a sense. The goddess is essentially the next phase up of the mentor. So it, with that being said, now we have to look back and say, well, what is the mentor's role? The mentor's role is to provide the hero with information and tools that they'll need to set out on their journey. Well, the goddess does the same thing, except the hero is already on the journey. The hero has already had a taste of death. The hero has already experienced some trials and faced some foes and maybe they need rejuvenation maybe they need a little bit more information and so what the goddess does is she gives the hero more up-to-date information more important information or more powerful tools so with that being said let me give you some examples so that you can really understand what we're talking about and I'm going to go back to my two favorite examples of Lord of the Rings and Star Wars because most everybody understands them and knows them. 
and it's really easy to identify those figures because they follow the monomyth format so well. First, let's go to Lord of the Rings. We have Frodo and the rest of the Fellowship go through the Mines of Moria, and they escape the Balrog, but not without losing Gandalf, their mentor. And now there's this void there where they, they had someone who could give them uh, wisdom and guidance along the way, and now that person is gone, so there, there's a void there in a sense. And what happens? The next place that they go to that they kind of get captured in is Galadriel's uh, realm, right? The, the, wood, the wood realm. And the woodland elves take the fellowship to Galadriel, and for most of them, she gives them, she rejuvenates them. She gives them a place to rest, to, to recoup from their injuries and from their psychological hurts from Gandalf being gone. When you look at it, Gandalf is kind of the glue that kept that crew together in the beginning. He's the only one that everybody trusted to lead the way. So, but the thing about Galadriel is she's more powerful than Gandalf in some ways. She's she's an ancient elf. Um, I believe she's even one of the elves from Valinor, but someone else would have to back me up on that. I'm not that caught up on my Tolkien history. But she she's an ancient figure. She represents the goddess. She is one of the ring bearers for the elves. She... She is the ruler of the Woodland Elves. I mean, she's just a very powerful figure. And she gives each one of them, but particularly in this instance, our hero, she gives Frodo information that he needs along the journey. One is that someone's going to betray you, and you can already kind of tell who it is. And then two that this journey is going to take a toll on you. And then she she also, she gives Aragorn some advice as well, seeing as he's kind of, he's going to take the torch for the whole story and become the hero of the, not necessarily the whole story, but he, he's a, also a protagonist and a hero in his own right. So she gives him some advice and the real thing, the real place where we see Galadriel act as this goddess figure is she gives each of them, or most of them, new weapons and new tools that will help them continue their journey, that will help them further down the darker road and trials that are ahead. So Gandalf kind of helped them along the way, and for example, look at if you look at Frodo, Merry, and Pippin, they all Strider, <laughs> Aragorn, Aragorn gave them each swords. They were regular swords, but they were swords nonetheless that they never had before, and that helped along the way. But when they meet Galadriel, she gives Merry and Pippin very special daggers that were used by her people. She gives Sam a a elven rope. She gives them elven food that will help sustain them for long periods of time. And she gives Frodo the light of Elendale, which, as we all know, eventually helps Sam and Frodo defeat Shiloh, the, the giant spider. So that's that's the example from Lord of the Rings. Another example that that will kind of express the point for for Star Wars, but also express the point that it doesn't have to be a female, is Yoda is the goddess figure in the trilogy, the original trilogy for Star Wars. Now, hear me out. In the first one, Yoda did not exist. In the Well, not that he didn't exist, but he was not mentioned, or you don't see Yoda in the first Star Wars. And so what we see is 
Leia sort of plays that role in a sense. And from what I've heard and seen in my studies, apparently early scripts had Leia. She was supposed to be part of this ancient priestess order and all these other things. But the, the role in A New Hope <laughs> of the goddess figure is played by Leia. She does not do as big of a job or fulfill the role nearly as well as Yoda does. But you can look at it as when they rescue Leia, she helps get those plans of the Death Star to her contacts in the Rebellion, where the heroes are also able to rest, recover, and in a sense, they do get new weapons because... They get like Luke gets an X-wing fighter and things like that. But the real, the real goddess in when you look at the trilogy as a whole is Yoda, because Yoda takes on that mentor role that Obi Wan once had. Except he's far more powerful than Obi Wan was. He is, in a sense of the Jedi, almost a godlike figure. And he teaches Yoda a master, or sorry, Yoda teaches Luke a mastery of the force that Ben just never could because he was never on that level in the first place. And so Yoda completes Luke's training. Yoda tests Luke in much deeper levels and he shows him the ways of the force that Luke hadn't seen before from Obi-Wan. So again and also while Luke is on Dagobah he gets some time to mentally come to terms with the the next phases of the road of trials so and then the last thing that Yoda does is he tells Luke if you're gonna leave now don't succumb to the dark side don't go down the easy path stay away from Vader because that's what Vader's going to try to tempt you into the dark side. And sure enough, Vader does. And that piece of advice is a piece that Luke had to have before he faced Darth Vader. Or else the outcome could have been completely different. So that is the goddess role. The goddess, again, just to recap, they, they help the hero kind of rejuvenate. For a time, they give the hero new insights or advice that will help them along their journey. And they give them additional weapons, tools, and sometimes more powerful tools to go now into the darkest part of their journey. And the only other thing I'll mention before we leave this topic is that just keep in mind the goddess role just because it it helps the hero does not always have to be portrayed as an ally right away in both of the examples we just used you have to remember that when the heroes first come across these figures there's a sense of danger or a sense of antagonistic force for example when the when the fellowship reached the outskirts of the woodland realm they are they're taken captive by the captain of the Woodland Elves. And they, there's a sense that they're in danger before they go to the goddess. And it's and their fates rest in the goddess' hands, which is Galadriel. And then when you look at Yoda, same thing. He, he comes to Luke in this guise of this kooky hermit that doesn't know anything and then come to find out he's this all-knowing ancient Jedi master so in the beginning though Luke and, and Yoda have this antagonistic thing because Luke only sees what he wants to see he doesn't see beyond the outside he doesn't see what's within and that's really one of Yoda's main lessons is do not judge me by my size do not judge the world by what you see. Judge it by how you feel and interact with it. So that is the role of the goddess in 15 minutes or less. <laughs> so if you like this video, if it's helpful, 
Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in other videos. Take it easy.